I'll, uh, I'll get you to take it off, Said. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, we're going to be demonstrating the new capabilities of AutoCAD and SEAL 3D 2022. So a couple of, of things first. Uh, we're going to be recording this. Uh, it will be available for everyone to review afterwards or to share with your colleagues. So we're going to be posting in our YouTube channel where you can access our past webinars and technical demos as well. Okay. So uh, my name is Said Lama. I'm the professional services consultant at SolidCAD, and I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Matt Colver. Matt Colver is a certified technical trainer with over 25 years of experience in civil engineering and consulting. At SolidCAD, Matt is a technical consultant for the civil infrastructure and GIS division, focused on Autodesk infrastructure products such as Civil 3D, InfraWorks, Vehicle Dragon, and Recap. He's highly regarded in the Autodesk civil community as a skilled trainer, a standard developer, and technical support specialist, in addition to authoring several training courseware titles. And he's also a Bluebeam certified consultant and trainer for Bluebeam Review Software. Amazing background. Now, uh, let's talk about the agenda. So this is what we have crafted for you today. Um, we're going to start with uh, what's new with AutoCAD 2022 and move on, moving on on Civil 3D 2022. At the end, we're going to finish up with a Q&A uh, section. So if we would love to hear from you. So please post your question in the Q&A panel. Before we start, I'd like to show you uh, our, our coming lineup of Civil 3D courses. We're gonna begin uh, with civil 3D grading and sub-assembly composer on May 11th. Then we have the civil 3D for surveyors on May 19th, followed by civil 3D fundamentals and production and detailing on May 25th. And finally, uh, civil 3D storm and sanitary analysis on June 17th. Uh, if you wanna look at the complete list, please go to our website and our training section. Also, uh, this is what we have in our, in our calendar in terms of upcoming events. The first one is the SurveyCAD GIS data flow. This one is pretty cool. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be demonstrating how to align field and office survey workflows and CAD to GIS and how to implement a new standardized system, including software templates, sub assemblies, styles, feature codes, and live work connectivity codes. We're also going to be kicking off our Cafe Blue Bean series on May 26. This is a six part mini series on digital plan reviews with Bluebeam. And finally, one of my favorite topics Civil 3D Pipe Networks on steroids. While Civil 3D Pipe Networks is one of the easiest tool sets to use, they're missing a lot in terms of efficiency. So, with CTC fleet of pipe tools, users will be able to edit pipe runs, perform detailed analysis through thread sheet syncing, create detailed pipe depth reports, manhole schedule, and manage part sizes and properties all at once. So please uh, follow the, the link uh, uh, to our event website for full description and registration. I'm going to also be sharing that link in the chat section. And now I'm going to hand it over to Matt, who's going to start this show. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, you can see my screen? Yes. Excellent. Okay. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm actually going to talk a little bit about InfraWorks as well. Not too much because we have a webinar coming up in June 8th, I believe, but just a little bit of a taste. And so uh, <laughs> that, that image. You showed me there. Thanks for the accolades, by the way, Said. That image you showed me there. Uh, apparently, I have to I have to shoot another one. I got a few more grays coming in, so I gotta I gotta make my image match my actual face. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. Okay. So no, let me just move my camera thing over here one second. There. That's better. So as I said, my name is Matt Kohlberg. I am your speaker today. How many people we got? We got 35 people signed in so far. Thank you very much for showing up. So here's the agenda. 
AutoCAD first, InfraWorks next, and Civil 3D last. I know your invitation said Civil 3D, um, but you know Civil 3D is it's AutoCAD and Civil 3D is all together. And so at the very least, I need to show you some of the new stuff with AutoCAD. And uh, just a little bit of a teaser with regard to InfraWorks. All right, let's get right into it. So AutoCAD, first of all, I'm just going to link this guy right here. Web pages for all three products. Um, in this case, what's new for AutoCAD 2022. Uh, there's the other two pages I'm going to show you. It's uh, like feature, uh, sorry, release notes is what I meant to say. And so here's the web page that AutoCAD has or Autodesk has to talk about what's new for AutoCAD. I just wanted to show you that that's available. Now, first and foremost, this one is always on everybody's mind. Is this the year that Autodesk is going to change the file format for AutoCAD? And uh, I can say, no, it's not the year. Next year? Don't know. We'll see. But the file format is the same. So we're on the 2018 file format right now, and we will continue to be on the 2018 file format up until 2022. The installer. So that one is, um, is a little bit different. It's a new installer. And you might think, okay, well, whatever. It's, it's a new installer. How, how different can it be? Well, it, it can be fairly different. So I wrote a, a blog article when we discovered what the new installer is going to entail. And so if you go to our SolidCAD blog, you can do a Google search for solid chat and uh, do a search for installing AutoCAD 2022. So the, the short story about this is you download the software like you always have. Double click setup and the software will be installed. What's different is it's a very, very simple installer. There's not very many options to choose from. Some of you are likely to have gone through the options and, and made some edits. You know, do we, do we want to install Express Tools? Uh, what's the path for the install location? Um, do we want to include custom ARG files? Okay, those kinds of choices are not available in the installer that you downloaded anymore. They're available in the Autodesk, you know, manage.autodesk.com website. So what you or your administrator can do is go to manage.autodesk.com. There's a new button called, excuse me, customize install or cu sorry, custom install. When you click that, you can actually customize the install for all of your products, which is actually kind of cool. Right. If you want to deploy AutoCAD and Map and Civil 3D and Plant and Revit to the same machine, you can actually create a single installer uh, to do so. You can't really do that. You know, last year you had to download each product separately and and install them and, and create deployments separately. So that's kind of a bonus this year. But this has to be done online. Manage.autodesk.com. That's where you can decide on which products and then make the decision. So for example, um, I've got AutoCAD 2022 selected here. And here's my customization options, install settings. Am I installing it or am I deploying it? Um, I haven't shown you, but there's your standard options like you remember from last year, except those options are now done online. Uh, when you're finished, you click Create Installer, and uh, and then it downloads all the required files to your machine. Uh, if you have chosen to install Plant 3D and Civil 3D together, it's going to be one installer, and um, it's the little. It, it'll start installing after it's been installed, and then you can stop it if you don't want to install it right away. But that's the installer now. It's no longer a set of BXC once it's been downloaded. It's a it's a batch file. And so that is a considerable difference this year compared to last year. So don't freak out. 
It's actually pretty good, but it's just different. So just understand that the installer now with all your main decisions is, is created through the web interface. Um, by the way, there is a Q&A at the end, but don't let that stop you from asking questions in the Q&A panel. Uh, there's also a, a chat panel. You can use that for chatting. But if you have a specific questions, please ask it in the Q&A panel. Um, either Saeed or me will be happy to try to answer those. Um, I, I might have to wait until the end to answer it. If I can, uh, I'll answer it before then. OK, trace is the first command I'm going to talk about in AutoCAD. You just switch to AutoCAD over here. There we are. So what trace is, it's something that you do on the web version of AutoCAD. So I know most people are using AutoCAD locally. But what trace is for is, is you upload your drawing to AutoCAD for web or BIM 360 or whatever. Anyways, you're going to start editing that file using AutoCAD for web. It doesn't really matter exactly where you save it. Um, I have the file open here. Right? So I have this file locally as well. So here's the file, and, and there's our panels on the left side. And one of those new panels is called a trace. Think about trace as really almost like a new layer, but it's a special layer that it it doesn't it doesn't interact really with anything underneath it. I mean, you can make dimensions to things, but trace is really for people who, you know, you, you don't want to give them permission to edit your file. You want to give them AutoCAD editing options, but please do so on top. So, you know, like an invisible piece of paper, you can just take that trace off. So it's similar to a layer, but it's, it's kind of different. So I'll, I'll create a new trace. And the trace has been started. And now I can just start doing whatever I want, creating a polygon, let's say rectangle. I can create some annotation, maybe a dimension, for example. All right, I'll dimension this line. I have all of the same AutoCAD editing tools that anybody does when you're editing on the web. All right, that's probably good enough. It, it's enough to show you what you can do. So that's called the trace, and I'll close the trace interface. So that, that information now disappears, right? I only see it when I'm in the trace interface. Uh, I currently have one trace right here. When I select it, that information comes back. I can create as many traces as I want. Again, this is almost like a markup tool for somebody. Now I'm going to open this on my desktop. Because the web is where you go to create the trace. And inside AutoCAD on your desktop is where you can go to, let's say, see the trace if you're a CAD person. And it'll take a second to download uh, and then open inside AutoCAD here. Whereas you don't see it yet, I do need to switch to the AutoCAD um, profile here. Workspace is the right the right word for that, actually. And then under the Collaborate window, I have a Traces palette. And so there's the trace that I added online. If I hover on it, it gives me some information about who created it, um, what's the space, creation date, when was it saved, who was it saved by. So I'll just select it. The rest of my drawing sort of goes a little bit grayed back or shaded back. And it zooms me into that particular trace. Now, it's nothing I can select. Really, it's just I'm looking at somebody's markups, essentially, is what I'm doing. And so that's what a trace is for. So again, to sum up. The traces are made in AutoCAD for web. You can provide somebody with a link and uh, they can start editing that file. Depending on the permissions you give them, they're able to add a trace. And then I can look at all those traces here inside the desktop version.
Next up is count. This one's actually pretty cool for those of you who need to do bills of materials for blocks, let's say. Uh, currently, it only works for blocks. I don't know that it works, that, that Autodesk is planning on making it work for anything else. Um, so I'm going to turn on my count palette, which is this. And so the palette shows me uh, all of the blocks that are in my current drawing. I have three blocks of that. I have one handicap block, and I have four of that. And so what I do is I can click on them. The rest of the drawing gets shaded back, and the three blocks are bright green. It's pretty easy to see them now. I'll click on handicap, everything shaded back. There it is. I'll click on uh, proposed sanitary. Same thing. So number one, it's pretty easy to navigate all of your blocks in the drawing. Uh, number two, I can right click and do a couple of things. I can review the count details. Right? I can match layer. I can match scale. I can do whatever. I'm not going to bother with that. I'll right click again. Now I can insert a count field. That's really just a piece of text with a field in it that counts that many blocks. Um, when I copy a block and run regen, that field, of course, updates. Now, yes, you could create this field yourself, but that's going to take some time. So this field, sorry, this tool is going to make it a little easier for you to create that field. So that's number one. Number two is actually where the whole bill of materials thing comes in. So what I'm going I'm to do is I'm going to turn this option on for creating a table. And I can select all the blocks, or one, or two, or however many I want to pick. And I'll insert that table into the drawing. So pretty quickly, you can get your bill of materials, at least for blocks uh, right now, into the drawing as a table. And again, it's, it's a dynamic table. So if I copy. Let's say this guy here, there's five of these. Two more times, oops. Three more times. And run regen. Table updates. And so that, my friends, is the count feature. Good for bill of materials, good for, uh, I, I suppose, not really a legend because there's, there's no really image here, but really bill of materials is sort of what you're looking for here. Uh, floating windows. This has been on the AutoCAD wish list for quite a while that I'm aware of, at least. Users want to be able to maximize a drawing on this monitor, and then, well, you can't see it, but I have another monitor over here. Uh, maximize a different drawing on that other monitor. And now we can do that. How do we do it? I tear off the file tab from file tabs right there like this. I now have a floating window. I can bring it to my spare monitor, and I can maximize it on that monitor now. So we can maximize screens on either monitor. We could sort of do that before, but it's definitely more streamlined uh, right now. Uh, Perry asks the question in the chat, there is no more repair. Is that correct? Um, Repair what? If you could expand on that question for me, Perry, I'll, I'll do my best to answer it. Uh, share and push to docs. These, these both deal with the web interface as well. So share is sort of like last year's um, last year's version, right? Shared views. This is a similar thing, but it's just a little bit different. Uh, the nice thing about the share this year is that all of your references, the images, XRS, they also go with it. All right, so there's a really quick button right here uh, up in our quick access. Show the drawing. Uh, I think there's another one probably in Collaborate. Yeah, there it is. And the big difference here is once this pops up, it's, it's pretty quite easy to use. I click Share. And what's going to happen is it's going to share a copy, including XREFs, links, and it expires 
in a week. Of course, you can go here to go to the help and learn more about it. And you choose the permission level. You're going to send somebody a link. Do you want them to be able to only view it? Or do you want them to be able to edit and save a copy of it? It's not going to save the original. They're going to be able to only save a copy. So don't worry about your original getting you know, messed up. Um, so I choose one or, one or two of these. As I switch between them, the link changes. Then I copy the link and email it to somebody. And so it's a way for somebody to either view your drawing or edit your drawing without actually having to own AutoCAD desktop. So that's what share does. Now this one, pub or push to Autodesk Docs. Now, number one, you have to have a subscription to Autodesk Docs to make this happen. Uh, when I click that button, it's really meant for pushing your paper space layouts. What it does is it creates a PDF of this document and uh, places it in Autodesk Docs, essentially. So, I mean, you could do this last year as well. You could just make a PDF and then upload it to Docs. That's two steps. Now, really, it's just one. So I'm just going to hit F1 here so we can see what the help file says. Right? Push to Docs uh, opens the Push to Docs palette where you can select AutoCAD layouts and upload PDFs to Autodesk Docs. And that's pretty much you know, what it does. You choose the sheets that you would like to make PDFs of. You change the PDF file name. You choose your, your project folder on Autodesk Docs where you want it to be stored. And then it makes a PDF and it uploads that PDF to that folder. And what you do with it after that is up to you. You could then create a link and share that PDF with somebody. Uh, but I think for the most part, this is going to be useful for maybe um, engineers or project managers to mark up, right? The drafting team or the design team is working in AutoCAD or Civil 3D. They'll push a PDF to Autodesk Docs and, um, and then let the engineer or project manager know it's up there and they can open up the PDF using Autodesk Docs and make markups that way. Okay, so I see Perry's reply. Uh, when you install software, you know, when you go to the Windows add removes um, programs, right? There's always a repair option, there's a, a reinstall option, or there's an uninstall option. So Perry's thinking there is no more repair option. Um, I don't know. I haven't checked that. So uh, yeah, I won't be able to answer that one for you, Perry because I haven't looked. I just installed the software fairly recently. I haven't had a chance to even think about repairing it or uninstalling it. So I can't answer that question. Um, I think maybe what we'll do is we'll mark that for answering and, and I'll see what I can do after the webinar. Um, once I'm done, it should be pretty quick for me to go check. Moving right along. Uh, start tab more resembles the start tab in civil 3d right this is maybe well this is civil 3d right now but this is pretty much the way Auto, autocad is going to look as well open a file new from template um, all this stuff this is it's really set up nicely for um bim 360 or, or autocad uh, autodesk construction cloud and so we we got a taste of this with Civil 3D last year, and the AutoCAD people are getting a taste of it uh, more this year. So really, it's just the redesign start tab is really all I just wanted to let you know. This one's fairly, um, fairly nice. If you're a published user in the background, it's going to use multiple cores in your computer instead of doing a publish with because like, AutoCAD for the most part uses one core and publish last year just continued to use that core this year it's going to use other cores so publish I haven't tried it yet but it should be quicker because it's using the other cores this one I was hesitating to throw that in Autodesk is majorly redefining their three-dimensional um, 
graphical engine. And that 3D tech preview is a command where you turn it on or off. It by default it's off in the software. And so if you turn it on, you're going to experience the beta version of this three this new three-dimensional tech. And so I uh, haven't read much about it. It's brand new. I guess Autodesk is, is providing it really for us to give them feedback. Uh, how is it working? Is it stable? Is it unstable? So if you don't do anything, it's off. It's going to be the old standard uh, graphical engine. If you decide to turn that on and, and take a chance and see how it works, um, go ahead. Uh, do yourself a favor, actually, and then provide feedback to Autodesk if you find something interesting about it. And that's what we have for AutoCAD. Next up, Interworks. So this is just going to be a short taste. We'll leave the rest of the time for the civil 3D stuff. So model builder, road decorations, vegetation content, performance has been improved. And as always, there's, there's new bridge components, parametric, you know, full span uh, bridge components. I don't have a bridge that I can show you today, but uh, Autodesk is continually working on the bridge. And why are they doing that? I mean, well, there's Revit, there's InfraWorks, there's Civil 3D, and we're all sort of working on similar projects. And so the Revit people can just bring bridges in from InfraWorks and just start working on them. The Civil 3D people can bring a bridge in maybe and show it in profile. So they're all, we're all sort of interconnected together. So let me show you the model builder first. Where's my InfraWorks? There it is. I'll go to the home. So model builder really is just a slight interface change. Not too much has changed about it. Uh, it's not going to allow you to do certain things until you've defined the proper area. Okay, when I zoom out too far, uh, I'm not going to be able to create create a model uh, of the extents. Excuse me. Once you zoom in, really, it's just the interface. These are the same buttons we had before. They're just in a different spot. Specify the model name, description, coordinate system. Again, all the same options. It's just a simpler interface. And that's all I want to show you about the model builder. Not too much new. It's just less cluttered, I think, and simpler to use. Road decorations. Now, we had road decorations last year, and we continue to have them this year. Um, but what's different is the speed at which they're calculated. See, last year, when I made a change to a road decoration, really, the entire model had to be regenerated. I mean, my lights here are, are spaced a little bit too closely. So let me change the spacing. See, that took exactly one second. Last year, the whole model would have had to have been recalculated. And so Autodesk is clearly working on performance. Uh, and, and they have been really ever since this InfraWorks software came out. They've been working on getting it better. I mean, InfraWorks can handle an immense amount of data, at least when you compare it with Civil 3D. And some people thought, oh, it's, it's a little bit slow sometimes, but it's, it's handling a ton of data too. Uh, but they figured out ways to make it faster now, especially with decorations. Any change you make to decorations is far faster now, right? Right. I, I change the spacing and let's change the rotation because they're clearly rotated wrong. There, again, one second edit. Takes no time. And that's your quick road decorations. Next up is some new vegetation content. So right now I've, I've done a stand of trees. That's what this is. But instead of trees, I just chose you know, some flowers. So I'll pick them. And this isn't new, this sort of uh, density adjustment slider. We've had that for a couple of years now. I'm not going to bother showing you that. What's different is the content. So when I go and pick a style, uh, I've got a couple here that I've used in the past already. This is just sort of, I don't know, let's call it sagebrush from some kind of grass. All right, so that's new. Uh, I'll show you some more. 
really it's just a vegetation library that we have access to. There we go. I'll open up the library for us. There we go. Vegetation. So vegetation, adaptive trees, bushes, flowers, grass, hedges, meadows, uh, and then optimized for performance. Let's have a look at that. Right, right, right now we just have a single uh, deciduous, deciduous. Meadows, haven't tried these ones out. It'd be the first time for me. Let's see how this looks. <laughs> Well, I only chose that one anyway, so. Oh, there it goes. It just took a bit of time. So all this style work that's been done really just, the more content you can have in your InfraWorks model, the better looking the content, obviously, the better looking your model is going to be. All right, so we talked about model builder, decorations, vegetation content, and with all that goes performance. I'm not able to show you bridges right now. So that's essentially InfraWorks. Stay tuned June 8th for our InfraWorks What's New for 22. They're going to go into a lot more detail. Okay, I've got 26 minutes left. Again, with Civil 3D. Um, let me pick this link because I, I, mean, I went through the trouble of making the link. I might as well actually, you know, you, oops. Might as well actually show you what the link is. Release notes for Civil 3D. What's new? New alignment workflows. Some new stuff in pressure networks, ArcGIS improvements, uh, user profile. I'm not going to really talk too much about this, but when you start the software for the first time, it's going to ask you a couple of questions uh, about your own personal workflow. Answer the questions, and it's going to create a custom profile for you. So these are the release notes. I'm not going to talk too much about that. File format. Again, another really big question on everybody's mind. Is this the year that Civil 3D is going to separate from AutoCAD? Uh, no, it's not. Again, just like AutoCAD, I think Autodesk's big sort of push is to keep AutoCAD and Civil 3D on the same file format. So when the AutoCAD file format changes, that could be next year, it could be three years from now, I don't know. When that changes, that's when the Civil 3D format changes. That's what their plan is. Is it going to happen for sure? Nobody knows for sure, but that's what Autodesk's plan is. So as long as the AutoCAD format is the same, the Civil format will be the same as well. So all the way from 2018, all the way through 2022, compatible with each other. Uh, with a couple of anomalies, as there always are, right? If there's an object now in 22 that doesn't exist in 2018, well, what does the software do? Right. Say, open it in 2018. This new feature will be visible, but because it doesn't exist in 2018, maybe you won't have any edits. So, but at the very least, we can open files saved in 22. We can open them in 2018. We can work with them. Project Explorer came out, oh, is it last summer? I think. I believe so. Project Explorer is available for 2020, 2021, and 2022. In 2022, there's been some new content added to deal with pressure networks. So that's that's what's new about Project Explorer for 2022. I'm, I'm still going to show you Project Explorer anyways, because I imagine maybe not all of you have seen it. So let me go to Civil 3D. I'm going to close my drawings. And I'll open Project Explorer. So what is Project Explorer? Uh, and where can it be found? Well, in 2022, you're going to find it in the Home tab in the ribbon. Um, while my drawing is loading up, let's talk about it a bit more. Project Explorer is not available if you just own Civil 3D. You must have an AEC collection subscription to have access to Project Explorer. Okay, so if you if you, if you just own Civil 3D, you're not going to have access to it. Have to have the AEC collection. It's a separate download. 
in, download and install Civil 3D, even if you have the AEC collection, you also have to download and install Project Explorer. It's a whole different thing. I'm going to switch my Civil 3D interface. There we are. There's Project Explorer right there in the home tab. Um, in 2021 and 2020, it's not there. It's in the Collaborate tab if you're looking for it in those versions. So I'll launch it. Project Explorer is a modeless dialog box. And what that means is the dialog box is just there. You can interact with your model with your mouse, uh, even though the dialog box is, um, is open. Just waiting for it to open. Give it one more second. There it is. So this is Project Explorer. There's a dialog box. And as you can see, I can interact with the rest of my model with the dialog box open. Now, this is not a webinar for Project Explorer. We'll save that for another day. Suffice to say, we can manage pretty much all of our objects points, surfaces, corridors, pipes, that kind of thing. Um, it's almost like your tool space, your prospector on steroids. We can do a lot of the same things, right? I'm going to right-click this pipe network. I can zoom to, I can pan to. What I can't do with the prospector is I can't adjust let's say pipe sizes all at once, all right? Here I am in the bottom half of this thing. I can right click and check it out. Where is it? I can set constant depths. I can set pipe styles and that one swap parts. In Civil 3D without Project Explorer, you're swapping parts one at a time. With Project Explorer, that's one of the big things with this software, you can swap all, all the parts all at once. You can do a lot of things all at once to a lot of different objects. Um, another thing I can do, take a look at my pipes. I'm going to zoom in here for us. There we are. Another thing I can do is edit what's called a pipe run. So I'm going to edit structures one through six. There we are. I'll edit the pipe run. And what I'm going to be able to do is I can set the slope of all those pipes to 2%. There. Uh, I need to click another button to update the structures, but basically one click, I've adjusted all the slopes all at once. Okay, so I'm just going to hit undo. Uh, that, close, undo. That is not new. That's the Project Explorer that we got last summer. Okay, I'm just going to show you what the Project Explorer does in, in, in its basic sense right now. Uh, with pipes, the Project Explorer swaps parts, um, sets pipe grades, that kind of thing. The rest of Project Explorer, for the most part, is about creating reports and uh, outputting files. So here's a typical report. It's, it's a report, but it's inside our drawing. This particular report is a structure report, and I've chosen the fields. There's a lot more fields than this. But I can choose the structure name, easting, northing, rim elevation, station offset, sump elevation. In fact, a lot of my surveying customers like to use Project Explorer to help them prepare files for survey layout, right? In Civil 3D, I could sort of create a structure report, but it didn't have necessarily everything I needed. And so Project Explorer, you can choose whatever fields you want and export to, let's say, a CSV file where the surveyor can then import and use it for layout. So Project Explorer is can be helpful for your surveyors for laying out structures and pipes. Um, I haven't shown you one, but I can do an incremental pipe report. So here's pipe A, and I can show you know northern easting elevation every 10 meters along that pipe as well. So Project Explorer is nice for creating custom reports. Now, what's new for Project Explorer, which has our time, what's new for Project Explorer is the ability to work with pressure networks. 
Now I have a pressure network here. It's not very big, but it's a pressure network. And there's a report for pressure network. So that's really what's new with Project Explorer for 2022. I just want to show you a little bit more about what Project Explorer does. Connected alignments are not new. But what is new is some of the neat things you can do with them now. Let's call this a highway interchange. The east-west road is the highway underneath, and the north-south road maybe is an overpass. So I'm going to create a connected alignment. Uh, let's say I would like this one to be an on-ramp onto the highway. So I'll pick this, this alignment offset first. I'll pick this one second. Which quadrant do I want? Right there. And then I'll choose some parameters, such as radius. And, and this isn't new. We, we could do this before. Uh, what is new are these. So when you have connected alignments, last year it was just a circular fillet. Now we have a bunch of different spirals and even a three-centered arc. Uh, once you pick a spiral type, well, now this becomes available to edit the parameters of the spiral. Spiral in, spiral out, even what type of spiral it is. Let's see, that looks good. I'll hit the preview button. Move this over so you can see. Maybe I don't want 25 meters of overlap, so I'll set that to 10. Preview, there's 10. Maybe I want to introduce the in offset, right? Right here, my offset is zero. I'll set that to five, let's say. Another preview. So it's still an offset alignment. However, it's offset from that blue alignment now for in, and I have the same choice for out as well. So I'll hit cancel and I'll create another one for you just so you can see it. Where it's a um, it's an off ramp from the highway. So I'll pick this one first and this one second. So the idea here is to come off the highway and head in this direction. I'll pick the quadrant the same as I did before. I'll go into parameters. Now this time I want to choose curve spiral curve. I think I'm happy with those numbers. But here is the option now. Because this is going to be more than 100, 180 degrees, that's the functionality that I want. So I'll pick 180. I'm not going to pick any offsets. I'll change the, off the, the overlap to 10. And I'll hit preview. And there's our spiral. There's our curve. There's our spiral. All one really simple connected alignment. When you make changes to both defining alignments, this alignment will update as well. And of course, it wouldn't be a collected connected alignment without the connected profile being attached. So I'm going to specify a curve length of five just to do it. And there's our alignment. Let me just quickly show you the profile that comes from it. All right, so the profile has to match the incoming and outgoing grades. All right, so here's the incoming grade. There's the outgoing grade, and it placed some vertical curves in there for us because that's what it needed to do. So connected alignments, great for this, great for any kind of really intersection. Oops, wrong button. The ArcGIS connector now supports raster images, and not just raster images, but multi-resolution raster images. So you can choose, basically, you can choose your resolution where you want to attach it to. I don't have an example for you. Suffice to say that uh, raster images on ArcGIS connector are supported. This one is for AutoCAD. It's not for you civil 3D people. When you send your civil 3D file to an AutoCAD user, all your styles are in there. All your settings are in there. Maybe that AutoCAD person doesn't need those. Maybe it's bloating the drawing to a certain degree. So this is for that AutoCAD person to remove your styles from the drawing. Purge AEC data. So send them a copy of your file. They'll be able to purge that data themselves without having you 
you know, have to do the DWG X word. Well, that's actually a different thing. See, purge AEC data only removes the invisible things like styles and settings. Your alignments and your surfaces will still be intact. Okay, so that's what that command does. All right, 13 minutes left. I'm just gonna click on this last link because it's a playlist for this. So grading optimization is kind of the, the big flagship thing this year. It's quite interesting. Um, when you go to YouTube and, uh, and, cert and go to the infrastructure YouTube channel, there is a, a playlist of five, I believe, different videos where you can basically learn all about grading optimization. So I'm gonna show you a little bit today if you want to learn more about grading optimization, I highly suggest going here. Watch them all because they're all pretty interesting. They show you everything that the software can do. Now, to be perfectly frank, I just got that grading optimization thing given to me yesterday. So I haven't had a lot of time to prepare much. But what I prepared gives you a, a reasonable sort of idea what the software does. All right. Open this final file, SHX file is good. So the idea of grading optimization is to give the software some parameters such as minimum slope, maximum slope, and then maybe some drain lines and just let it go. So for example, this inner guy here is a zone where I want a certain minimum maximum grade. This outer one is my zone boundary. And, and between those two zones, I'm okay with, you know, minimum 2%, but a maximum of, let's say, 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 slope. This is a building pad. This is the zone outside the building pad where I need to have a, a certain minimum slope there as well. Uh, these guys are drain lines. I would like the water or the... The drainage to drain along those lines. These are just AutoCAD lines and polylines. Now I've drawn those lines in the direction where I want the water to drain. That's important when you're defining drain lines. Um, when you're defining zones, it doesn't matter what elevation they are. It doesn't matter what direction they're drawn. Same thing with the building pad. It doesn't matter what elevation the building pad is. In fact, we can ask the software to optimize the elevation of that building pad as well. So I don't even need to know what the building pad is. And we can ask the software to, to try to balance cuts and fills. All right, so first I need to go to the Analyze tab. And I'm gonna turn on something called Grading Objects. These, the Grading Objects tool turns on a palette where we have access to all of our grading type of entities. Now, it's, it's not really entities because we're drawing polylines. But let's say I want to define something as a parking lot. I draw the thing as a polyline, but I define that polyline as a parking lot because it has its own properties. Parking lots have their own properties. Reveals have their properties. Building pads, curbs, ponds, they all have their individual properties. Right, so I've already defined all of these entities. And so I'm gonna to go to my grading objects tab here. And so I'll click the inside, right? That's my inside zone boundary. And what are we looking at here? Uh, I've chosen to customize the constraints. I want a max slope of 5% and min slope of two. Uh, I've chosen not to turn those on. Uh, I don't care about the depth of material. I want to use it as a break line. The outside, pretty much the same thing, except just different numbers. Three to one slope, max, 2%, min, and that one's the grading limit. No grading will happen anywhere outside that. You have to have one of these. At least, uh, yeah, you have to have one of these that defines the outer boundary, essentially, is what that is. I'll show you the building pad that I've done. There it is. 
Uh, I don't care about the elevation. I'll let the software figure that, that out. And I do have one more zone in here, the building slope zone, because if I don't have that, I'm essentially going to get a vertical face uh, next to the building pad. And so I've chosen those as my grades as well. So you draw yourself some lines and polylines, and you define them as grading objects. And once you define them, then we can go click Optimize. By the way, all these tools are on the right there inside the Analyze tab. As our time. Good, perfect. Optimize. Uh, another dialog box. Well, actually, it's not even a dialog box. It's a whole new interface. Oh, by the way, this grading optimization as well, just like Project Explorer, you must have the AEC collection subscription to be able to download and install grading optimization. Um, there are samples because this is brand spanking new, very new, very different. So there are sample files on your computer when you install this. Program files, Autodesk, rating optimization, samples. So when you get this installed, there's a bunch of samples in there. Couple that with the videos, and that's going to be your start to how to learn this software. All right, here we go. This is the interface. I'll zoom in to our little site. By the way, the performance of this is very nice. I'll make some choices. There's my 33 max, 2 min. Um, Balance, cut, and fill. Well, if I set it to zero, it's not going to balance at all. 100, it's going to try to balance it as much as it can. I'm just going to drag it down here a little bit. Uh, do I want to smooth the contours at all? Nah, don't care about that. All right, I'll move this over so we can see it a little better. So what I want you to do, I'm going to click the Optimize button and keep your eye on these contours and see what they do. All right, here we go. Optimize. All right, it's working. The contours are changing. They're following my drain lines. There are no contours in the building pad, as there should not be. I'll click this guy, and this is our convergence plot. Now, I don't really understand exactly what this means. When you watch those, those Autodesk videos, th what they say is, this line should be vertical. That means, and then eventually it's going to flatten out. That means it is doing its job. It's It's able to follow your numbers and, and do a good job, essentially. Here's our cut and fill down here. I'll close that up. Another interface element we have is this guy right here, which is the visualization toolbar. Now, what I can do is I can turn on um, violations. Okay, Anything you see that's red is a violation of our numbers. Uh, it could be slight. It could be fairly major. Uh, as you see it, it's still working. It's still optimizing. It's going to do this for quite a long time unless we hit stop. And so this is looking pretty good. I've got a little bit of red here and there. Uh, now, that could be like a quarter percent or 0.1 percent. That might not be a problem. Uh, if I change my values a little bit more, uh, I probably wouldn't have any violations at all. I'm reasonably pleased with that. So I'll hit the stop button. And then I'll click that, which will bring this brand new surface and feature lines into Civil 3D. All right, because the grading optimizer is a whole different piece of software. All right, do I want to bring in points? No, do I want to bring in feature lines? Sure. I've got some options. Do I want to make a new site? Do I want to update an existing site? What's my style? And then it's going to bring the surface in. What's the name? What's the style? Fine, I'll click Finish. And you're going to see a new surface with fairly dense contours. Now, it's the entire site, the original ground and our new, um, our new site, all, all is one. That's what you're going to see. Uh, what it's doing. It's actually creating an XML file in the background and then importing that XML file. So there we are. That's our site. I will make a really quick profile through here so we can have a look at what it did. Not good enough. Quick profile. Uh, original 
So the new one, I'll just make a different style so we can see what that looks like. Wrong button. All right, the gray is the original ground. The purple is the new ground. All right, so here's the edge. There's our building pad. Now, of course, I did something odd because I've got a, a slope here that's a bit too steep. We've got some low points because of my drain lines. And then it's tied in over here. So this is an example of rough grading. I didn't really do too much to it. There's no pond. There's no sidewalk. There's no curb. It's really an example of, of rough grading with this new software, grading optimization. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I look forward to spending more time with this thing because it's still pretty new and to see exactly what it can do. But those videos are going to help you out. I uh, highly suggest you having a look at those things. And so that is my presentation so far. There is one question in the Q&A. Yeah. Andy says, in the AU preview, it looked like grading optimization would optimize a corridor profile, but the online videos didn't really show them as something grading optimizer would optimize. Do you know if you can optimize a road profile? So um, what I've seen, Andy, as far as road profiles and this tool go together, um, the grading optimizer will will grade your site and if you give it you know a 10 percent max like maybe that's what your road is going to be it's going to do that uh, one of the videos in that playlist shows you how to do this and essentially what they've done is they've rough graded this not rough graded the site but they've graded the site and they've drawn their alignment and they basically use the the new surface as the profile for the corridor now, of course, it's not going to be perfect because there's going to be two to one slopes here and there. So they they take the new surface as the starting point for the corridor profile, and then they tweak it a little bit. So in one sense, the answer is sort of yes, it, it sort of does optimize the profile, but but not like InfraWorks, right? InfraWorks has a profile optimizing tool. Uh, the way the grading tool works is just a little bit different. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, if you watch one of those videos in the playlist, you'll see them do it and, and it really should answer your question. Nothing else in the Q&A, nothing else in the chat panel. We have oh, zero minutes left. So, well, uh, yeah, if, yeah, if anybody else have uh, further questions, please feel free to reach out to Matt or myself and we'll be happy to get back to you with an answer. Also, I uh, just want to mention that uh, if you're looking to get into Pro Explorer and grading optimization uh, and you have only Civil 3D, there's an upgrade path without the necessity to add a new seed. Uh, so you can upgrade from Civil 3D to the AAC collection and get access to these new functionalities. Um, well, I guess uh, we are going to finish this up and um, I'd like to thank Matt for a fantastic presentation. Uh, we, I think we will learn a lot today. And I'd like to thank everybody for attending and taking this time to, to watch Matt uh, do his thing. So um, thank you again and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you, Said. Bye, everybody. Bye.